a very bloody face indeed. And I was wondering about why the hyenas were so full and they were dashing backwards and forwards away from the water. This particular hyena is not just covered in the blood. Oh, there's a jackal as well. Not just covered in the blood from the particular kill that I'm going to show you in a moment, but is in fact, I think, being beaten up by the rest of the clan. So we're in the clan lands. And lo and behold, what should we find but three different carnivores all in one particular sighting? And the reason that they're here is relatively obvious. Here is a dead hippopotamus in the middle of the clan lands with a young male lion. I suspect one of the young boys that we've seen around here pretty regularly, actually. As to who is responsible for this dead hippopotamus, well, that is anybody's guess. There's probably about 20 or so hyenas, maybe even more, wandering about here. There's a male lion. In theory, if it's the male lion that I think it is, there should be two male lions around here. And of course, an assortment of jackal that have been having a marvelous time. It's amazing. This is fresh as well. There's some jackal skirting around the edges. They were so close to the lion earlier, picking up the scraps of the hippopotamus. And there's our lion jealously guarding his prize. I don't know if he killed it or not. I would say he didn't do it on his own, that's for certain. It might even have been killed by another hippopotamus in a fight. Unlikely, though, out of the water, unless it had a fight with another hippopotamus in the water over territory and succumbed to its injuries, wandering about here searching for food. I don't know. It's a mystery and we'll probably never know the answer to it, but it's certainly a boon for all of the animals. Jackals, hyenas, and lions included. A hippopotamus meal is one that is going to last them for a considerable period of time. What are you doing, Jackal? Are you dancing because you're so happy? Yay, I've got a hippo. Or is something biting you? <laughs> what was that all about? Well, you're a bit confused there. What? What? what are you? Rebecca, I agree completely. I just want to see what this jackal's doing quickly. What are you doing, weirdo? I know what it's doing. Hello and welcome to those of you that have just joined us. We are live here with three of the most iconic carnivores, all gathered in a particular place for a very particular reason. And just a quick introduction as to where we are and what it is that we're looking at. We'll explain all of this in a moment, but it is the most amazing sighting. We've just stumbled upon it. My name is Jamie and this morning, Jandre is on camera with me and we're live here at around about, I think it's about 8 o'clock in the morning in the Maasai Mara here in Kenya. And because this is live, it means that you can send through any questions that you have to ask and you can do that in the comment section below and let us explain a little bit about the mystery that's unfolding here. So, we have a male lion feeding off a freshly, what to me looks relatively freshly killed hippopotamus. If my suspicions are correct we've got two male lions somewhere here but of course the hippopotamus has brought forth an assortment of both scavengers and hunters alike in the form of the blackback jackal and then many many spotted hyenas that have all gathered on the outskirts now judging from those full bellies these hyena have already had a chance to snack on the hippopotamus i don't know because of course we've just arrived here I have absolutely no idea if they are responsible for killing the hippo or if it was the work of the male lion or if perhaps the hippo died of natural causes and the various carnivores of this region are just taking full advantage of it. What I can tell you, though, is that these hyenas have now been relegated to the outskirts of this kill. They're not quite as fast and sneaky as the jackals and they are very, very patient. 
And what they're going to do is they're going to hide out here, rest in the shade, and wait for the opportunity to go and grab a little bit of meat while the male lion is not looking. Now, because there are about 20 hyenas here, if this were just one lioness, there is a very good chance that they would have attempted to bully her and chase her away. Oh, see? skirmish between hyenas. One of them's been badly beaten up, I noticed. I, have, I can't see it anymore. But there is one of them with a couple of scratches and scars on its face. There we go. That hyena has fallen foul of the hierarchy system that dominates the clans of hyenas out here. Very, very painful looking bites. And that we can almost guarantee was inflicted by other hyenas. That's the way that they fight with each other. They go for the ears, they go for the face, and they go for the tails and the feet. And you can see it in the body language of the hyenas. Oh, that actually, Ellen, thank you for sending that through, because that brings me back to what I was talking about earlier. So Ellen's wondering about whether or not these hyenas could run the lion off this kill. Potentially, yes. I don't think they want to risk injury, though. If this were a lioness, there are at least, I would say at least 20 hyenas dotted in the nearby vicinity around us, and some of them have moved off to go and have a little bit of a drink. If this were a lioness, they would have chased her off almost, almost certainly. Ten hyenas to every one lioness, mm, between five and ten, depending on how angry and hungry the lioness is feeling. But a male lion is an entirely different kettle of fish. And a male lion, especially a young male lion, is far more likely to actually pursue a chase and kill a hyena. I've seen a, hy I've seen a lion kill eight hyena in one go before. So it does happen. Male lions just tend to be slightly angry. And what I think we should do, because of course we've got this rather gory view of the, of the hippopotamus and not much of this lion's face, and I would really like to see if it is the male that I'm thinking that it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drive around and have a quick look and let's see if we can figure out who he is. So over the course of the months that we've spent here, I've spent a lot of time here. I have got to know two young males that spend a bit of time in this area and I'm hoping that this is one of them because I haven't seen them in, seen them in weeks. And while we go a little bit closer, we'll stop for one second just to have a look at the jackal that is waiting patiently because Anna Marie is wondering about it. Oh, hello, boy. You're sticking your head up over the rather gory hippopotamus. That's both disgusting and quite lovely at the same time. <laughs> He's got a collar on. He's a researched lion. That's interesting. That we definitely need to find out more about. Now, Anna Marie, sorry, just to get back to the lion and the jackal, which sounds very much like a just so story or an Aesop fable. Anna Marie, yes, the lion would chase the jackal if the jackal were to get too close. The lion is very full and very lazy right now. He's feeling particularly bloated. You can imagine he's been gorging himself on hippopotamus all night. So the jackals are quick, they're brave, and they know just how fast their reflexes are. So what you'll find is that they will, and they do, sneak right up next to the lion and they'll feed from the opposite side of the carcass. But if they overstep that boundary, then yes, the lions will chase them. And a couple of occasions I've seen particularly lioness chase after the jackal and try and catch them. Even when the jackal are not even trying to scavenge, even when they're just minding their own business. There's a little bit of enmity because the jackal are fast, they're agile, and what they'll do is they'll stand next to a lion pride and they'll bark for hours, tirelessly, bark their alarm call, especially if the lions are near their den site, which of course, in turn, doesn't really please the lions because it means that everything in the vicinity knows that they're there. But for the most part, I think that our lion is a little bit too fat and happy. He's had a really, really great opportunity handed to him. Do I think that this male killed this hippopotamus by himself? No. It's possible, but it's unlikely. Here we go, more hyenas. I told you they were hiding out absolutely everywhere. There's more hyenas gathered in the background. This is central territory for the North Clan hyenas. We've nicknamed it the Clan Lands because their den sites are scattered all around this area. And there are definitely more hyena here than there are 
lions. Let's go round and let's carry on with our original goal, which was to go and have a look at his face. Now, I said he's got a collar on. Obviously, there are lots and lots of people out here that do invaluable research into the different creatures that we see, whether it's lions, cheetah, hyenas, whatever it happens to be. With the hyenas, it's usually the matriarch of the clan, the head of the clan, that is collared. But something like a young male would be collared for a very, very interesting reason. Oh, there we go. We have a question from Taylor about whether or not we collar hyenas. Yes, the matriarch is collared. I apologize if I've got your name wrong, Rebecca. Sorry, can you give it to me again? Kayla, Kayla, not Taylor, apologies. Kayla. Yes, we do collar hyenas. Well, we don't personally, but hyenas are collared. Okay, now this might give us a better idea as to exactly what's happened. Now, this young male could have been collared for a very important purpose. Because young males disperse away from their prides, it is a way of keeping track of their movements and just how far they move from their natal range and, of course, where they move during the migration because, to a certain extent, lions will follow the wildebeest and the zebra herds. In this case, obviously, we're in the Mara Triangle, just to give you a better idea of where exactly we are. In this case, there are no, there are no wildebeest around anymore. I've never seen this male before unless he's had a collar put on him recently. I will find out we are in contact with the various research organizations. So we will find out from the Mara Lion Project. That data provides us with invaluable information because it can be used in the future for the conservation of the species. It's really important to know exactly where male lions roam and where they go because they're the ones that are most likely to come into conflict with human beings. Pushed out of territories, away from the larger males, they'll stray into places where other lions might not. Now, let us turn our attentions to the hippopotamus. Unfortunately, looking rather grim, it's a bit difficult to determine exactly what happened here. I mean, he's got some fresh cuts on his back. Could be from a lion's claws, but really, it's impossible to say. I can tell you that it's very fresh because Jandre and myself are not being overwhelmed by the scent of decomposing meat. Give it a day and it's going to be really rather pungent here. Which, of course, brings us beautifully to Michael's question, which is how long will it take them to eat it? it? Depends how much this lion decides to defend his particular carcass. He could probably get through this in, I would say he could gorge himself here for another two days, three days, and then leave the scraps to the hyenas to finish up. But if he decides that he's actually not that keen on finishing the entire thing, then the hyenas will probably come in and finish it in about a, two days, give or take. That's usually how long they take to eat an entire hippo. Remember, there's about a hundred hyenas in this clan. Ah, of course, because I came this side, he's decided to go and feed on the other side, <laughs> naturally. Cindy, how long will he stay next to the hippo for? It's quite difficult to predict. He could stay and jealously guard it, as I said, for another three days. He could actually decide it's not worth his while. At some point, he's going to need to drink. Should we go around again? Back around we go. Might as well watch him feeding on his prize. At some point, he's going to have to go and drink, in which case the hyenas will move in. They'll take the opportunity, and then he'll come bounding back, tail thrashing and teeth bared, and he'll chase them away once again. As I said, for a hyena, not it's possible, but it's not really worth risking a fight with him. What could happen, because it's such a big carcass, it really is, he can't actually control every corner of it. So what might happen, the, the fuller he gets, the more sort of fat and uncomfortable he gets, the more likely it'll be that we'll even find hyenas feeding right next to him. I'm striving around this jackal. Justin, welcome and good morning. Justin, I don't know. I don't know if he did kill the hippo, to be completely honest with you. We, it's, hello jackal. Just don't want to scare him. Here we go, okay. Oh, Jackal's feeling brave, sneaking up to the male lion. Justin, I don't know if he killed this hippo all on his own. I doubt it. 
Yes, two young males could probably bring down a hippopotamus. Three young males would have even more success and round about four or five male lions, yes, absolutely, they could tackle a hippo. But if this hippo was already injured, possibly in a fight, with another hippopotamus over territory. Remember, we're coming into the dry season here. Oh, look at the bravery of this jackal. Oh, inching a little bit close. Looking for any potential opportunities. They're gonna sidle around off to the right. No, not worth it, not worth the risk. That lion's just too well positioned. So I don't know if this lion did kill the hippo. It's possible that the hyenas stole, uh, killed the hippo and that the lion stole it. Male lions are one of the biggest scavengers out here. In fact, they're the biggest scavenger out here. And they are not above uh, stealing food that they haven't caught and killed themselves. So really, we don't know. We don't know the answer to that. I can tell you that he's been plagued by biting flies. That's why he's snapping like that in irritation. I wonder who you are, boy. Ah, now I've spoken about this in terms of this happening overnight, but I haven't really explained my reasoning. Oh, hello, Jekyll. Perhaps that side might work. Jennifer, the reason that the hippopotamus is in an open field when they live in water is that hippopotamus are herbivores and they eat grass. So although they live in water during the day to hide their sensitive skin from the sun, at night they come out and they can easily cover five to ten miles in one night as they move out grazing. And it's very common to find them far from the river. And we're not that far away from the river. We're probably about a mile and a half away from the Mara River itself. So although it looks a sort of odd to see him here. This probably happened sometime last night when it was out trying to graze. We'll never know the answer to the mystery of exactly what killed this hippopotamus, but I can tell you that it is an absolute boon for the various predators out here. And for this young male especially. It's not easy being a young male lion. Yes, he's top of the, he's, he's top dog, if you could use that expression. It's a very top cat, maybe, right now. He's the biggest scavenger out here. But he is a young male lion, and life is really tough for them. They've got to move away from the dominant male lions. If they happen to encounter a dominant male lion, there's a very good chance they could be chased and even killed. They're constantly on the move. They've been sort of uprooted from an area that they know where they grew up with the rest of their pride. And in this case, this young chap is all on his own. Susan, <laughs> this is a really good question. I was wondering the same thing myself. You want to know where the vultures are? Sometimes it takes them a while to find something, and sometimes they decide it's just not worth their while if they can see that they're not gonna have a chance to feed yet. Perhaps there is another large carcass somewhere else. I don't see any vultures. Do you see any vultures, Jandre? No, oh, Jandre's found one. How did you even do that? Amazing. There we go, so there's a couple of vultures soaring around. They know that they're not gonna have the opportunity to feed. I would guess and say that in the next six hours, the tr there's not that many trees for them to land in, but the nearest trees will be covered in vultures. A large carcass like this, bear in mind it's first thing in the morning here, and vultures actually need the day to heat up before they can start to do what this one is doing, which is, th or these two are doing which is thermaling. So vultures are very big, very bulky birds. They're amazing flyers once there are hot air currents rising off the ground. That obviously doesn't happen first thing in the morning, but once the sun's been out for a few hours, then they can take to the skies. So it might just be that these vultures, because this, this kill happened last night, these vultures are still in the process of discovering it. And it's very common to find a fresh kill first thing in the morning and come back in the afternoon to see hundreds of vultures. Again, I'm not 100% sure who got to this hippopotamus first, but it doesn't actually matter because it's the answer to Megan's question. Megan, 
the eyes are one of the easiest and the softest parts of the kill, and they're usually one of the first things to go in almost every circumstance. Um, often the skin is very, very tough, and the predator might be tired from killing the killing the animal, so you'll find that they'll go for the easy parts first before opening it up. In this case, I think it was probably from the smaller scavengers, either a jackal or potentially something like a tawny eagle, one of the smaller scavenging birds that usually find these sorts of kills first. Could also have been a hyena. If these hyenas killed it, if, and that's a big if, they killed it, then the higher ranking ones would probably have been gathered where this lion is now, eating the best parts of the hippo first, and the lower ranking hyenas, who are not big enough to fight for their place at the kill, they would have gone around the other side and they would have started chewing on the ears and the eyes. But it's very common to see a carcass that's the eyes have been removed as one of the first things. Well, this has been quite an extraordinary experience out here in the, the Masai Mara. It just goes to show the unexpected can be around every corner out here in the wilderness of Africa. We're going to be saying goodbye to many of you for now. We'll catch up with you shortly if the action changes here in the Mara.